Well, to provide a fresh outlook on the sports at the Games, I now have the pleasure of welcoming on set uh, Lindsay Krasnov, instructor at the New York University Tisch Institute of Global Sport and author of Basketball Empire, France and the Making of a Global NBA and WNBA. Thank you so much for joining us here on set. It's been uh, quite a whirlwind of an Olympic Games, uh, especially in basketball, which is your speciality. It is. And... I mean, there has to have been something which has caught your eye just in terms of the United States is the big dog, mm -hmm. but now all of a sudden you've got these other nations and possibly your dream of a global WNBA or NBA could actually be coming to life. Exactly. And I think that high level of competitiveness, the deep fields on both sides of the Olympic basketball tournament, particularly five by five, is what's helped to make basketball the hottest tickets in town. I should say, town up in the north, um, because the first round of basketball has been played in Lille. I was there for the opening match Saturday, uh, Australia versus Japan, I think, if memory serves. It's been a blur of basketball. And I was there uh, yesterday for a day of women's basketball, including the big uh, ticket, uh, France versus Nigeria. And I've been to a lot of NBA games. I've been to the NBA Paris game. And, you know, good crowds, but wow, If when you have over 20,000 of your new favorite friends all in one arena really cheering for the home team for France, that was magic, eclectic, electric. And I can see very much how the basketball crowds have been helping egg on the teams. They're doing this not just for France, men and women, but for the U.S., for South Sudan, for many of the other teams there. Um, and, you know, it's everyone's got a little bit of skin in the game. Yes, on paper, both the U.S. teams look like they are likely contenders for gold. But, you know, th there is such depth you don't know. I mean, we saw them being pushed just before the Olympics yeah. by South yeah. Sudan. Just It was one point LeBron James actually with the last gasp winner for the United States. And how lovely to see such a young country like South Sudan actually get, push them all the way. Uh, I mean, that surely does give hope that the game can grow uh, beyond the borders of the U.S. It's anyone's game, right? The It's not that the United States got worse. It's that the rest of the world got better. And particularly South Sudan, who do not have a single NBA player on their roster, um, although they do have a player who will be playing with Duke University this fall, um, to have that kind of super close win. Uh, but, you know, for one last basket, they would have won that. That says a lot, not just for the country itself, and helps to instill a further sense of self-confidence on the world stage and also can confer a somewhat different sense of legitimacy than, say, participation in the United Nations or other uh, more quote unquote, weightier areas uh, of international relations. Uh, basketball has put South Sudan on the map and is also about what the country is able to give back and contribute to the world mm. uh, on the world state uh, on one of the world's biggest stages at the Olympics. Nigeria on the women's side of the tournament doing something very similar that their players were super strong and tough. Um, their fans who were up in Lille yesterday, amazing and really helped to add to the excitement in the arena, which I've not witnessed for a women's, um, a women's uh, sport. Ever. And especially beating Australia at their first victory in 20 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the whole thing, um, just eclectic. And one imagines as the tournament moves down to Paris, to Bercy next week, how that is going to help to... Uh, add a little bit of a dimension to whoever is on the on the court. Just in terms of the club structure in the United States, which has made it such a success in the NBA, WNBA, how have you seen that replicated in Europe? Obviously, there's the EuroLeague basketball, mm -hmm. uh, but can this format be taken elsewhere? Or, I mean, should it be changed around? Uh, is it something that it can be a success outside of the United States? Well, so the, the youth pipelines in basketball particularly are right now under scrutiny on both sides of the Atlantic. Uh, one of the bigger conversations in and around the NBA this past season, uh, as noted, uh, you know, NBA coach Doc Rivers, was that uh, more and more the European and African players who come into the league have the technicality, the teamwork, have all the right components that the U.S. players, while they're super athletic and talented and gifted, don't have. Because in the U.S. system, there's a focus on games and practices far fewer. Whereas in Europe, it's quite different. There's very much that uh, focus and emphasis on practicing six times a week and then playing a game on the seventh, 
day. So there's that different mindset. Um, there's also the fact that European players have, in many cases, been playing pro since they were 16 as part of the uh, pro club academy system uh, that's formed some of the uh, newest rookies in the NBA, Alex Saar, um, uh, Zachary Rizaker, uh, Tijane Asaloon, who was at uh, the game uh, yesterday in Lille to cheer on his big sister. Um, so uh, it's a different kind of pipeline, um, but you now have 19, 20 year old European kids, teenagers, uh, going into the NBA because they've learned the, the tactics, the technique, the teamwork, um, they focus on the physicality. They focus on the mental aspect once they get mm -hmm. to the U.S. Like Victor Wembanyama from yes, France. Yes, yes, exactly. Many like Victor Wembanyama. Well, Victor is you know an alien, as everyone refers to him <laughs> himself as well. The alien emoji is his shorthand. But um, you know, a player who is already mature beyond his years before he made that transition. Uh, it would be uh, fantastic to see all of these up-and-coming basketball players, of course, excel not only on the Olympic stage but on uh, the uh, major club scene uh, mm -hmm. for uh, the world basketball and to see that grow, of course. Uh, Lindsay, unfortunately, that's where we have to uh, cut it in terms of the basketball. But uh, once again, thank you for your insight. Uh, very interesting. And uh, enjoy the 3x3 three three basketball as well. It's going to be <laughs> really a hoot. Yeah. Uh, Lindsay Krasnov there joining us from the New York University uh, Sports Institute. Also uh, author on uh, basketball, bringing the WNBA and NBA into the world.